All right. Hi, I'm Jesse Fruerth from Utah Tar Sands Resistance and Peaceful Uprising. Um, we're here at uh, outside the hearing of the Department of Water Quality Board, uh, who just approved by a vote of nine to two uh, a permit for the first tar sands mine uh, in the United States. Um, on the basis that there is not uh, sufficient groundwater to require any sort of water pollution mitigation plan for this mine. Um, I've, I've been out to this area, I've actually drank water that was on the ground, um, and not to be a country route, but if I see water on the ground, I conclude there's groundwater. I don't need a court hearing and legalese to tell me whether or not there's groundwater. And in particular, this is really sacred, vital, um, precious, water, uh, because of course this here is a map of the Colorado River Basin, which is um, a collection of ecosystems, a biome, a bioregion, um, all of which every drop of water that comes, um, that drops in this area all filters through to the Colorado River through one of these tributaries. All of the people who rely on this water system are brothers and sisters in resource. And right here, smack dab center north, uh, in the whole region, is uh, this highly polluting, toxic, uh, proposed tar sands mine. Uh, that the Department of Water Quality, in its illustrious and fraudulent ways, just said, "Oh yeah, go ahead. You don't. You don't even need to worry about your water pollution." So let's let's talk about the consequences of this. So right here, uh, this is at Pierre Springs. Uh, and the name of their mine includes the word springs. That probably should have been a clue. Uh, to the board that in fact there is water there. Uh, so right up here, this is at 8,135 feet. So you've got this mine way up on the top of the high Colorado plateau. Moab, which is very nearby, uh, is already at 4,000 feet. So this is not exactly on a mountaintop. Uh, it's on a high plateau, uh, but understand that the, the base of Vail Ski Resort is also at about 8,000 feet. So this is really high up there. We don't know exactly their plans because uh, the um, information has not been forthcoming either from U.S. Oil Sands, that's the company developing it, or the state. So we don't know whether they're planning to discharge the water into the White River to the north, to the um, Colorado River to the south, or to the Green River to the west. Nevertheless, all of those frontline communities are probably most impacted by this decision. However, there are 30 million people who rely on Colorado River water. 30 million people who would not have water to drink but for the Colorado River Basin. And the state of Utah, in these fraudulent, racist, um, industrialist capitalists from U.S. oil sands, want to threaten all of this by putting something highly toxic that will threaten to put mercury, lead, um, uh, arsenic into the water in proportions that we've never seen before. And people say, well, how do you know there's lead? How do you know there's arsenic? Well, that's because right around Moab, there's the semi-famous Atlas Minerals Corporation's tailings mine, and that's from an, uh, old uranium mining. So not only is there radioactive material already in the Colorado River system, uh, but there's also the same lead and mercury that are in cadmium and zinc that I referred to before. So we're well aware of what's in Utah soils. And the reason that that doesn't leach into the water right now is because it's trapped in these sorts of rocks. So that's tar sands. I think it might be better to call it tar rock. I don't know, maybe in Alberta it's like peanut butter, but here in Utah it's rock until you heat it up. Now, in, in this rock is the bitumen that they're going after, uh, but also is things like lead and the arsenic. In order to get the bitumen out, they have to completely pulverize and chemically process this rock. And then either they have uh, toxic water that's laced with lead and arsenic, or if they're going to somehow clean the water, and that's what US oil sands claim, is they have a brand new process where we don't need tailings ponds, the water's going to be totally clean, we'll just ship it right down the Colorado River. Well, let's take their word for it and say that's true that they've done that. Well, now they've got solid arsenic and lead dust, toxic piles that are now sandy. And that's also words right from U.S. Oil Sands. They claim that after they've strip mined this area, this beautiful area of PR Springs uh, on the East Tappaquits Plateau in the Book Cliffs of Utah, they say what they'll leave behind is beach sand. Well, one, it's not beach sand currently. Currently it's high plateau and beautiful deciduous and um, coniferous forests in the canyons. Two, if you, um, you know, put beach sand that is laced with mercury and lead, water runs through beach sand. It doesn't run over the surface. This is not a permeable rock. The mercury and arsenic is safely in here. That's why I'm not afraid to touch it. But if you turn that into sand, it becomes highly dangerous. And this is water for 30 million people that's either going to be running right off of PR Springs, where the U.S. oil sands uh, mine is proposed to be, or at least it's going to run right by it. And 
anybody who's been to the Colorado Basin and what we in Utah call Canyon Country before, they know of these famous flash floods. And when they happen, they are all over the place. And this is um, a real concern that if there are piles of toxic sand just sitting around, around this strip mine, that this stuff is going to get washed right down the river. In fact, we know that's going to happen because to various extents over the years, both large and small, that's exactly what's been happening with the Atlas Minerals tailings in nearby Moab. And this is the most threatened waterway in the United States. One in 12 Americans rely on this for, for water. 15% um, of the nation's crops are watered with this water. Um, and three million people get their, get their energy from hydroelectric power here. This includes the cities of Las Vegas, most of Phoenix, Los Angeles, San Diego, and 24 other Southern California cities all get their water from this place that the state of Utah has the chutzpah to poison in the upper north of the Colorado River Basin. It's unconscionable, it's awful, and the fact that the Utah Water Quality Board voted 9-2 to, to, to approve this shows that we are living in a Kafka-esque world where someone such as myself can go drink water that was on the ground in this area and yet somehow in, in the, the, the fancifulness of a building that my tax dollars paid for, that gets all twisted around and in some sort of weird, bizarre legalese, now all of a sudden there's not groundwater. It's intolerable. Any questions? Hmm.